Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Edens, a finance coach, author, and wealth mindset researcher. If you're new here, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us as we learn about how to unlock our inner millionaire by developing a wealth mindset and finance skills. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. Today we're talking about wealth. What is wealth really and what does it look like or mean to you? We live in a day and age today where our wealth is very much defined by our belongings and our possessions, and social media bombard us, bombards us every single day of the week, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with images of luxury and glam and wealth. We have sprawling mansions, exotic vacations, luxury yachts, private jets, designer clothes and accessories, luxury vehicles, and all of these things just completely, it, it's something that people will just flex constantly on social media with those things, and they'll get a lot of reinforcement and a lot of likes for flexing about their latest purchase or their latest vacation or, um, you know, these kind of things. And so I think it's something that while these impress people to a certain degree, and we are all very, not all of us, but many of us are very influenced by the kind of car someone drives, the kind of home someone lives in, the kind of clothes they wear. I mean, in, at least here in the United States, um, we're a very image-driven culture. And so we're often there kind of judging people or kind of weighing them up in our minds based on all of these external factors. And it, there's so much more to who we are as people than the things that we own in our material possessions. But unfortunately, in our current world today, we're very judged on that. And there's also a lot of peer pressure to own all of these luxury things. Even if you cannot afford them at all, there's all of this pressure to afford it anyway and do your own flexing on your own social media so you can impress your friends, your family, and your fans. And I think it's just unfortunate because I just have seen a big shift in this culturally just in the last 10, 15 years where I feel like social media is, while it has its perks and fun things about it, obviously, it also, I think, really reinforces a certain lifestyle that your average person cannot afford to live. The average American household right now is only making $58,000 a year. And with inflation, that is just out of the question to try to live a luxury lifestyle. Um, those people are just trying to make ends meet. And so a lot of people, though, will, will end up getting themselves in debt to live a certain lifestyle. And then even people with fairly high incomes will end up being just in huge amounts of debt because you know you can always borrow more money for a bigger house or a more expensive car there's always more and more and more things that you can spend on and just when you think you've kind of you know bought your dream thing then you see a friend or a neighbor who has something even nicer than you and you're suddenly not happy with your thing you had your home or your car and it doesn't look so good anymore so it's a very kind of you know human instinctual thing to compare ourselves to the people around us. But when you're comparing yourself to multimillionaires and billionaires on social media and or to people who are in enormous amounts of debt to maintain the lifestyles that they're in, it just doesn't set you up for success. And so you really want to be aware of that and be cognizant of that and just make up your mind that you're not going to let social media tell you how to spend your money or dictate how much debt you get into or even dictate your lifestyle because only you know what's best for you and what um, a wealthy lifestyle that you would enjoy looks like to you. And I'm not knocking luxury items because I think they're great and um, they can be a lot of fun and I like looking at pictures of beautiful homes and beautiful yachts and private jets just as much as the next person. Um, but in terms of letting those things kind of make you sort of be consumed with envy and make you less content with the lifestyle that you lead, which you've got good reasons for leading it that way, um, that can then just be really devastating to both your mental health and your finances. So I have three questions for you to kind of ask yourself and think through, and you could even pull out your journal and kind of journal these questions if you want to, or you know, just think them through while you're watching this video and you can always save this video for later 
and come back and, and revisit these later if you don't have time right now. But here's some questions that you can ask yourself to help you really kind of hone down on what wealth looks like to you and what being rich and, and having that kind of lifestyle would look like for yourself. So the number one question is, what is wealth really? And we've sort of touched on this already, but wealth is, you know, like we said, very much defined by material possessions. And so it's up to you if you want to let that be your definition of wealth or if your definition of wealth is something else. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, like I said, it doesn't cut you out of owning any nice things ever, but just being aware that our culture really drives this kind of perception that material possessions mean you're wealthy. Well, I have news for you. Material possessions can also mean that you're in an enormous amount of debt or that the person who you're looking at their Instagram feed, um, that they're in a huge amount of debt to be able to sustain that lifestyle. I mean, you can't really like get behind the curtain and look at their bank accounts and see exactly what's going on with that picture. And so it's really good to remember that while those status symbols are the thing that people will flex with, just because they own them doesn't mean that they can afford them. And it certainly doesn't mean that you should go out and buy them to try to kind of keep up with that either, because if you can't afford it, it's not the right choice for you either. So really good question there is what is wealth really? And what, you know, because I think, like I said, we associate wealth with someone who owns a lot of material goods and possessions, but there are a lot of wealthy people out there who choose not to buy all those status symbols and are very wealthy. But like I said, you can't get behind the curtain and see how much is in their bank accounts. And so you might think that someone isn't really that wealthy and they, they very much are. They just choose not to spend their money on status symbols and consumer goods because maybe they're investing instead um, or they've got a lot in savings or maybe they're just not big spenders or all of the above. You know, Warren Buffett is a perfect example of a billionaire next door. And you can watch my videos on him. I've got a mini series on Warren Buffett that I'll link to in the description. But he's fascinating because despite being worth at the time of this filming, despite being worth $115 billion and being one of the top 10 richest people in the world, Warren Buffett still eats breakfast at McDonald's every morning, drives a fairly old car and is living in the same home that he's lived in since 1958. So it's just a really good thing to remember that wealth isn't material possessions, um, even though that is, I think, the way that kind of on the surface that we think about it. But wealth is how much money do you have in your bank account? How much debt are you in? Do you have a way to retire when you're old? Um, I saw a really interesting YouTube video that I haven't had a chance to watch yet, but the title was something really attention grabbing, like, you know, millennials are going to die broke or something like that. And I'm really interested to kind of explore that topic more because I think that that's kind of gets at the whole thing of how much pressure there is on our generation to own these things that we really, most of us can't afford to own without carrying debt. Um, and if you can't afford something without debt, you can't afford it. I mean, that's just the way I look at it. You might have another perspective on that and that's totally fine. But my perspective and the one I teach my students is if you can't afford it without debt, you can't afford it. Give or take a few things. Sometimes when you're in your early years, you have to take out a modest loan to buy a car or you might need to take out a mortgage to buy your first home. But beyond those two things, if you can't pay cash for it, you can't afford it. So good rule of thumb there. The second thing question to ask yourself is how much money do I need to be financially independent? So when you think about what wealth means to you or how much money you would need to be rich or to feel rich, um, Financial independence really plays into this. So there's a lot of definitions out there about financial independence, but the one that I have kind of formulated for myself and the one I teach my students is it hinges on two things. So the first thing is, are you completely debt free? Like we talked about, and sometimes this can take a while to get debt free. So if you're carrying student loans, you're carrying car loans, you're carrying a mortgage, don't beat yourself up over it. It's perfectly normal to have some of that debt when you're in your 20s and 30s. But as much as possible, are you moving away from being in debt? And then once you get out of debt, are you making a commitment to be completely debt free? And that extends to your credit cards of not carrying credit card balances. 
um, and keeping those paid off religiously and just accepting that however much money you are making is the money you have to work with. And if you want to fix that scenario, you have to get creative and go figure out how to make more money. And that is something I'm talking about over on my Instagram right now. If you want to come follow me at Sarah Eden's Financial on Instagram, I'm doing a 30-day series on how to make more money. And then I'll also link in the description. I have a two-part mini series on different ways. There's a hundred different ways to make more money. So you can watch that if you need some inspiration. So that's the first thing that I feel like financial independence really hinges on is being debt free. The second thing is, are you set for retirement? And a lot of people will, when they're doing retirement planning, they'll be advised to think about having enough money into their 80s or so, maybe you know mid 80s. But with innovations in healthcare and modern science, there's a distinct possibility that our lifespans will be even longer than that. And so what I advise is that you make sure that you have enough to live a comfortable lifestyle, you know, perhaps not lavish, but you're not starving and homeless. Um, and how can you afford to live a comfortable lifestyle during retirement all the way into say your mid nineties, I think is a good kind of ballpoint bar, ballpark there as well. Um, and, and think that through of how much money would you need to live on year to year into your mid nineties. If you assume that you're probably going to want to quit working full time between maybe 65 and 70, I think that's a realistic point, you know, where a lot of people just don't want to work full time past then, or they develop a health issue that uh, stops them from working, unfortunately, full time or even part time. So this is the time if you're my age and younger or you're, you know, a little bit older than me. This is the time to be putting everything you can into savings and into investments for that future that you're going to have. So being set for your retirement well into your mid 90s. And if you Google retirement calculators, you can find a whole bunch of different free resources online where you can plug in how much you're making today, how much debt you're still carrying, um, how much you should be putting aside for savings and investments. And it'll kind of help you plot out what your game plan needs to be for retirement. And I'll do a whole nother, I feel like I could probably do a series on this as well. Um, and if you wanna go one step further, you can work with a retirement planner or a financial advisor who specializes in retirement planning and they can help you really get down in the weeds on coming up with like a really solid financial plan so that you are all set for retirement that way. So if you don't wanna to have to kind of do the math yourself or run the numbers or you just want to have some professional expertise, I'd highly recommend that you work with someone on retirement planning. That's something that I have on my list of things to do is to find a good retirement planner to work with as well, just so that my husband and I are all uh, squared away for retirement that way and that we're doing what we need to do now because it's really easy because we live in this consumer culture. You know, where do you see people talking on social media about, oh my goodness, I contributed like $5,000 to my retirement plan this month, you know, nowhere, nowhere. Like that's just not popular. There's, there's, that is not going to get you any like likes on your post. Um, unless you're followed by a lot of finance coaches and financial planners, I guess. But you know, we're encouraged and, and almost pushed into buying status symbols and, and these things that will keep us from having much of a retirement, if any retirement, by the time we get to our 70s, 80s, and 90s. And so to be able to be financially independent and then simultaneously live a luxury lifestyle, right? You have to be a multi, multi-millionaire, honestly. Like these days with inflation and all the um, ways that things are costing so much more, to really have a comfortable inflation adjusted plan with your savings and your investments for your retirement and then own a luxury car or two or three and a luxury home and a vacation home and a private jet and you know not that most of us need that and a luxury yacht or whatever other kind of status symbols you can think of to be able to own those things, insure those things, maintain those things 
and then also have yourself sorted out for retirement. They just aren't compatible for the vast majority of us. So if you can look at pictures of beautiful luxury things on social media and not be falling into that trap of you know, going along with that consumer culture that's going to keep you poor and perhaps set you up for a very uncomfortable, unpleasant and impoverished retirement, then, you know, if you can, if you can not feel consumed by um, that desire to keep up with that lifestyle or have something similar or feel bad about the way you're currently living, then social media is probably fine. But you might want to unfollow some of those accounts if they're making you feel bad about yourself and your lifestyle, because it's just really, it can just be a slippery slope. So something to think about there for you is, um, think about, do you want that luxury lifestyle or do you want to be financially independent by which I mean being hundred percent debt free and set for retirement into your mid 90s. Just in case, you know, you end up living way past your projections. And I think it's also good to think through, um, you know, maybe you want to retire even earlier and go to working part time, maybe in your 50s instead of your 60s and getting those um, income streams set up through your investments, for example, or um, other income streams so that you've got money that you're just getting paid to wake up in the morning, basically. And now is the time to be laying the foundation, the groundwork for that. And personally, I wish I'd started 10 years ago. I didn't really under, well, I didn't understand the concept of this at all whatsoever. Retirement was just not on my radar 10 years ago. But I really wish that I'd been thinking about this more because I would have started investing a lot sooner. Obviously, with investments, you can lose money as well as making money. And so it's something that you want to educate yourself on and find a good investment advisor to work with on your investments if you have questions and are getting started um, because that's not something I advise here on my channel. But personally, I wish I had started investing much sooner because with compound interest, I'd be in a different financial picture today rather than having started, like I've really just started investing seriously last year and started educating myself about all of that when I went into finance as my full-time job. And so the sooner you can get started laying that foundation for your retirement with savings and investings, the better is, is the last word I'll say on that. The third question to ask yourself is what does wealth mean to me beyond just money and material possessions? Because like we were talking about previously, our culture right now is so consumed with wealth being equated with external belongings and possessions that you can flex with and, and show off to your friends and put on your social media feed and get lots of likes, you know, like we said, whether that's a car house vacation and so on. And not that those are bad. I think those can be super fun and lovely if you can afford them. It's, you know, just as long as it's within your, like your means to do so by all means, enjoy yourself and don't feel guilty about it whatsoever. Um, but feeling pressured to have those kind of status symbols is a whole nother thing. So for you, you might not really be that interested in status symbols and you might be more interested in having a lifestyle that where things are very simple and where you have a um, very minimalist lifestyle and where your home is peaceful and calm and um, tidy and orderly and you're not feeling like you're constantly, you know, buying more and more stuff that you have to figure out where to store or you're getting rid of at Goodwill two months later because you're not sure why you even bought it. Um, so you might be more of a minimalist that way. Um, you might also be someone who places more emphasis on having the free time to be able to do the things you enjoy and spend with your loved ones and your family and friends. And so in that case, wealth for you might mean having a job that gives you a flexible lifestyle so you're not spending 100% of your time either in the car or at the office and totally miss your whole, you know, your children's growing up experience or miss so much time with your spouse or partner because you're just consumed with work. And when you're not physically at work, you're thinking about work or stressing about work or trying to decompress so you can go back and do it again the next day. Um, and so for you, that might be, you know, mean changing career fields or 
working part time or finding a way to get a flexible lifestyle that way and more work life balance because they there's the saying time is money and so maybe for you just having more time in your life and more space and breathing room in your schedule is worth more to you than even having a big bank account and owning a lot of possessions that you have to insure and maintain and things like that. So that might be more like what wealth looks like to you. It's all very individual, which is why it's a good thing to think about and journal about and so forth so that you're not just rammed down that pathway that we get sent on social media with the consumerism and the possessions and the status symbols that are, that are commonly associated with wealth. Um, if you need a resource and something else to kind of um, get some ideas flowing for you, I really recommend this book. This is Happy Money by Ken Honda. Can you see this? There we go. This is Happy Money by Ken Honda. This little book is a gem. So not only is the book this the book that finally got me thinking about actually investing and got me started on investing, but this book is just absolutely a phenomenal resource in terms of healing your relationship with money and changing the way that you think about money. And it, I just can't recommend Ken Honda's work enough. So definitely check that. I'll, I'll link to it in the description. Um, but that's just a wonderful book. And he's just such a fun writer. It's a fun read. It's a quick read. And um, so if you struggle with kind of defining for yourself, what does wealth mean to you? And how can we be wealthy outside of just material possessions and define it differently? I'd really recommend Happy Money because wealth can often, you know, there's also the saying health is wealth um, because having our health is something that is such a gift and it's such a amazing thing to wake up every morning and be healthy and well um, and to be able to do work that you love and have meaningful work and meaningful relationships. So those kinds of things can be the things that really make us feel wealthy regardless of our bank accounts. I mean, I just this is something that actually just totally popped into my head, but um, quick story and then we'll wrap up for the day. But my grandmother grew up on, my grandmother on my mom's side, she grew up very, very, very poor. They were very impoverished and she grew up, um, they weren't even, they didn't even own their own farm. They were sharecroppers on a cotton farm in South Texas. And it was a really, really hard life. She had so many siblings, how many, I think she had eight or nine siblings. And so they were all kind of living in this sort of trailer together. There was no air conditioning. If you've ever been to Texas in the summer, you know how hot it gets. It's hard to imagine living in Texas in the summer with no air conditioning. And what they would do is they would go around to different farmers' fields and pick the cotton. And they would have these huge uh, canvas sacks that they would haul around. You know, and these are kids. This was way before child labor laws. And so the whole family would get out there and didn't have any shoes, they didn't have any money for shoes, and they would be out there with these canvas sacks picking cotton, and cotton is very abrasive, um, it's in this husk, and so they'd have all these abrasions on their hands and arms from picking cotton, and there were like snakes and rattlesnakes and things in the fields. So just a very hard um, life, and the thing that, I, that always struck me and has stayed with me all these years is that my grandmother who lived a long, happy life and passed away when she was almost 99, um, my grandmother never looked back at that incredibly difficult time in her life and when they even struggled sometimes to get enough food to eat. She never looked back at that time in her life and said, oh my goodness, that was awful. I can't believe how horrible it was. Um, what she looked back at and this comes down so much to mindset around money and wealth and things like that. She looked back and had so many fond memories of the times that she spent out there with her siblings, the times that she spent with her parents. And just even though it was hard work, they were all doing it together. And she had so many funny stories to tell about um, little spats she'd have with her sisters and her brother. And it's just really a fascinating thing to, as a child, to sit there at the kitchen table and listen to her tell all of her stories because she came from a background that nobody would ever want. Honestly, it was so hard and so challenging and just in every possible way. She would often have to skip school even because the cotton needed picking. So they wouldn't even be able to attend school sometimes because they had to get the cotton crops picked. But she had all these fond memories of her family and her spending time with her friends and was always talking about how grateful she was for her many blessings and 
um, just what a good time it was. And so that just goes to show that you can be living in dire poverty and still be happy. I'm not saying that poverty is a good condition and I wouldn't wish on anybody. Um, but it's a good reminder that our material possessions and those status symbols are not what makes us happy. It's really more about the connections with other humans in our lives and the ability to have our health and also our mindset and how we choose to look at life and choosing to focus on the good and focus on the positive, no matter what our external circumstances are. So my grandmother was always a great source of inspiration in that sense of really being able to um, identify, kind of redefine wealth and redefine um, a good life based on non-monetary things in a very much a space where there was a real absence of money and any kind of material comforts and things like that. So just a very, very inspiring woman. And um, just so I hope you enjoyed that story because it's just, that's really fun. I just hadn't thought about that one in a while. Um, and again, this book from Ken Honda with Happy Money is just a gem as well and really reinforces some of these concepts as well, that it's our mindset around money that can really help us be happy no matter how much or how little we have. And then also as we work on our mindset around money and wealth, it actually helps us attract more wealth and money into our lives um, because we're just being more creative about how to make more money or more mindful about our spending or um, you know, more grateful for the money that we do have in our lives. I think that social media so often can lead to a lot of discontent and unhappiness because it bombards us with images of things that we probably don't have um, and probably would like to have or at least sound like they're fun to have. And um, you know, we can just get very discontent with our lives and forget how much we have you know, relative to even people who are living in the third world right now or people who are living in extreme poverty and homelessness, um, we are so, so blessed to have all the access to all the things that we have and, you know, then to turn around and be more philanthropic with others and uh, remember to give to charity and give to people in our community. Um, it just really helps us, I think, feel more abundant no matter where we are in our lives. So that's the three questions for you to kind of think about and journal again. So what is wealth really? Um, how much money do I need to be financially independent? And what does wealth mean to me beyond just money and material possessions? So kind of have a think about those and your answer might be different from mine and different from someone else's and that's great because we're all different and unique. And so think those through and that may help you just to be able to um, kind of not get sucked into the consumer culture that we live in and then also maybe be just experience more happiness like right now just from having watched this video just experience more happiness and more peace around what you have in your life and be able to just get rid of some of that toxic discontent and maybe unfollow um, accounts on social media that make you feel discontent with your life or bad about yourself or um, you know, bad about where you are at this stage in your life, because that's also a really big thing. You know, a lot of these people that we see on social media, they have been very successful in their careers and they may have been, you know, working 10, 20, 30, 40 or more years in their career to get to this pinnacle where they are now. And we're not seeing all the years when they were probably renting like a really crummy apartment and driving a beater and not sure where, you know, the next paycheck for groceries was going to come from. So we don't see that. We see the kind of pinnacle of their work and them at their best and we don't see the journey um, but remember that especially if you're in your 20s and early 30s that it is really really or even in your teens it's really important to remember that that um, level of financial success does not happen overnight for almost anyone and so it takes decades of work to get to the point where you can even consider affording some of those um, things that you see on social media and so to remember too, that it might be something that you can have down the road, just perhaps, you know, not right now. So all really good things to think through as, you know, you ponder these questions about what wealth really means to you and deciding to kind of take ownership of that and redefine that for yourself. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me and for being here until the very end. Thank you for all your lovely comments that you leave and also for your lovely comments over on Instagram and your direct messages. I read all of those, so thank you so much. And I'm so delighted to have you all with me here on my channel and I will see you again soon in my next video.